Today is September 24th, 2022. This is episode 206 of Maelstrom Radio. Maelstrom Radio. With your hosts, Gladys and Schichter. And welcome everybody back to Maelstrom Radio. My name is Peter. With me as always is my good friend and co-host Quentin. It's Saturday. <laughs> it is. Happy Saturday. And there's there's no guest today, but it's just us. <laughs> it's a really weird Saturday episode. We don't have someone else here. <laughs> it's, it's an esoteric intro today. You got you to keep, you know, you got to keep people on their toes. They don't, people don't know. <laughs> uh, anyone else shout out? Mm, I don't know if anyone else shouts us out during intros. I don't even shout us out during intros. I think, I think what Chili's saying is that he sings along. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, no, I don't do those during intros either. I just like rock out to the music. It's great. I think. Well, he's rocking out so hard he's screaming. Now imagine walking by Chili's house. <laughs> there are so many things that honestly, that's probably not the weirdest one that would be like, coming out of. It's probably house. a little cooler out. Maybe Chili has a window open. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear Flattis and Shinter yelled out. And there's somebody walking by like, what the hell? Again, probably not the weirdest thing to hear coming out of Chili's window. <laughs> it's true. The weirdest thing they can fear is Chili's like talking about the sign above his bedroom that says, you know, enter as, fr- uh, enter as enemies, leave as friends. <laughs> I mean, I feel like some of your sound bites recordings might get a little bit interesting. That's true. Or Chili happens to have a package and he's got the gloves on. That's also true. I well, also if they see that from the window. <laughs> well, if they see that, they'd probably be because some because people. what we saw was a man caressing a box, and from the street version of that, it was a man caressing a box, <laughs> wearing industrial cleaning gloves. <laughs> Either way, someone saw a man caressing a box. It's just, you know. Yeah, but but I feel it's different. If you are caressing a box <laughs> with your bare hand, it's less creepy than if you're doing it with big cleaning gloves on. Yeah, no, it, it looks like you're getting ready to throw that. Well, I mean, he lives near the ocean. He's probably just going to throw the box out in the water in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm just chumming the water. <laughs> what you yeah. doing? It's fishing. <laughs> Speaking of fishing, I hear you've been enjoying Island Sanctuary lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so I've been playing Island Sanctuary Aww. a little, a little bit, wee bit. Uh, taking it slow, like Yoshi P said to. Uh, and it's, it's you didn't decide to rush it two days well, in. No, like everybody else did. <laughs> now everybody's like, "What do I do? I got the bike." <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, yeah, I'm taking my time with it. I, I pop if I pop in, I, I do a little bit of Island Sanctuary stuff and. It's nice. It's like a nice like, oh, I can go kill time. It's, the, the cool thing is you, you can queue from there. So you can queue for PvP and stuff from there. So yeah, it's a it's a nice like, like item. Yeah, it's it's a nice in between of like, I can go there and, and you know, scratch, you know, bleats by Dre. It's, but while I, you know, <laughs> while I queue for crystal conflict or something uh and so yeah it's 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 pretty good i i my only downside is that i found out that some items that you can make and i know it's totally optional it it just seems like a misstep almost like a i feel like everything should have been on even footing with the island sanctuary but there's an there's an item that you can make that's a fountain that's a uh, otter otter fountain and it looks really nice I've but you it. need you need to be a high end crafter to make it, so it seems like out of place to not put it as like a like a, a a you know carrot on a stick for Island Sanctuary. Like oh, you have to like 
like the end game of violent sanctuary is to like gather like over time enough things to make this this fountain <laughs> like the motorcycle is like a I good mean, like you could do that you like chili said or have money you just you gather all the stuff on your island you make stuff you make money and then you buy the otter statue. i mean can, how much money i guess you can make i guess you could buy crafting mater- materia that way and then sell it and then slowly make the money and buy them but i i guess my i, I would like to see everything be locked in island sanctuary because then you're like if you're on if you don't if you don't have the money or you don't have things leveled like let's let's say like you know it's it's uh, yeah. like it's somebody's like i want that but now i have to dish out money so you have to rather wait till the market like regulates and it's cheap enough um or have a good friend that's like please please make this for me. <laughs> please or you know they they put some crafting stations on the island sanctuary and then you can level your crafters while you're on there as well and then now you know. not a bad idea <laughs> now now there we're talking like speed level they're playing the long the long game they just they got in that one little thing but they forgot to put in the the in-between bits the in-between bits yeah uh but we'll we'll get more updates i think in 6.3 for island sanctuary or is it 6.4 i forget i have no idea i think it's 6.3 i think it's the next patch like major patch that'll add something else to island sanctuary increase the levels do something uh add new animals or new like i places to explore i don't 6.4 and 6.5 i thought okay so not the next one but i think it'll be a little bit later because 6.3 is going to be um <clears throat> the epic that's true so right yeah uh so i'm interested to see where it goes i would like for them to focus more on stuff not outside of it i, I don't know if it was just like they didn't know what to do with it like they were like oh we have this fountain <laughs> like they didn't, i don't know if they just didn't know what to do and it was maybe like uh, just a miss like I, I hope in the future everything's just made on the island like it's just like oh because then if you have to go off the island it makes it seems like a a weird thing like to do i don't mm-hmm. know like it's just it's just it's strange to me to go away from the island to do the thing to make for the island like it's like i gotta go to off my island it's like gilligan leaving the island to come back with like a freezer like yep i left and then i came back and then we i have a freezer and you know the scientist is just like, I made one out of coconuts. <laughs> so, thanks for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, or make it low level crafter, but items from max level island. See that? I'm okay with that. Like, if it, if it's like very low level crafter and everybody can just make it, then, then it'll be cheap, right? Like, at, at the cost would be like, oh, okay. Like, if I put enough time on my island, and i can be a low level crafter to make it then it's not a big deal like you can just go and lock yeah, like if it's work. yeah because if it's only like the first 10 levels of crafting that's easy peasy to get now i was like so. even if it's level 50 crafting that wouldn't be terrible that still wouldn't be terrible right, you, you can get out 30 levels in a couple hours these days yeah. now. and, and, and then there are probably a lot of them like then they don't have to worry about the, it being sold in the marketplace either because you would need the island yeah. stuff to make it so it's just it's going back to the old uh, Atma grind. <laughs> like, it's like, I need, like, shouting in town, oh. I need someone to make my fountain. <laughs> I need level 50 crit. Will tip. Bring back any memories? <laughs> no, actually. I never really had to deal with that. I mean, any game? <laughs> Just shouting in town, will tip. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. There it is. Uh, They're not bad memories sometimes. Sometimes we're like, oh, I remember the days. Uh, EverQuest uh, 1, shouting yeah. for all the different buffs in the plane of knowledge. Anybody give me buffs, please? Or teleporting. Yeah, teleporting was a, uh, a pretty big shout one. Shout ring for... What's a shout? Oh, shout. <laughs> that was like a shout ring, like like a bunch of like whatever the... It's the, relay. The, it's like a hunt train. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't you remember web rings back in the day? Yeah. <laughs> I link your site, you link my site, and we link mm-hmm. all of our friends, and now we got a web ring going. Yeah. That doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it does, but there's a lot less people using websites. So like, everyone or, just goes to like, Google or something. To you think places. it would even work with streaming, and it still kind of doesn't. <laughs> like, we link to each other. Kind of does. Like, it, our equivalent of streaming would be like the streamer also watches section at the bottom. It and would rating. be. It also would be, but all of our friends are in the UK. So. <laughs> the problem is we're so late at night that it was like, 
we can't raid all. We just need to make more North American friends. It's true. If you're in North America and want to be our friend, let us know. Uh, yeah. You know who's not our friend? Or, I mean, maybe they could be our friend if they uh, sponsored us? The video? I don't know if we... We discussed that, I guess. No. <laughs> no? All right. Well, nah, there it know. goes. Out the door no. right there. <laughs> As they, from from what I've heard, they're not fun to work with. So they're not. No, no. no. Also, potential Logitech. fire hazard. By the way, with the new powers. Oh, uh, did they? Have, oh, they did have one. It's true. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we'll get into yeah. it. Uh, so uh, EVGA Wait, no longer. Was that, was that Nvidia or was that? Oh no! Recently, like EVGA they just figured. So they just figured out that the new graphics cards are going to come with these like connectors to co co to be compatible with old power supplies but yeah people are doing testing some people are getting you know they're starting to get cards out for testing yeah so so far some people have said I mean, they can't talk about the test but they can talk about this the cable that connects to make it work with old thing it's like the old and this is going to go deep nerd. This is very deep yeah, computer Yeah, this is, this is the old, you're talking about, this is the 12-pin the connector stuff, right? This is the old Molex to, to, to the old Molex to, to, to modular. <laughs> so th I, this is so deep. Someone's going to like, there's only like three people listening to this right now. Like, I know what they're talking about. Like, but it, it, long story short, to get out of like the weeds of like nerdum and like deep tech. It, th there was a it, it pinged the rails on your on your power supply to always think like oh I need to work at max capacity right so it's always where it'll burn out mm -hmm. I, I and I can co commit I will say had a power supply burn out of a computer because of that uh, because those Molex those Molex to newer powers they don't work they they think they're gonna work and it, I don't care how good your power supply is I had one I have a, I had a really good power supply in my computer at the time and it burnt out like it shorted my I thought I, I almost fried everything in my computer luckily it hmm. it was such a good power supply that it only shorted itself out. <laughs> it knew to like That's kill itself yeah it knew, knew to kill something and it was itself <laughs> so uh, so that's, that's Ouch. one, two EVGA will no longer be doing business with NVIDIA. Uh, th yeah. th that was mentioned right before the, the 40, uh, series cards were announced. Uh, and the 40 series cards are ridiculously priced. Uh, I know they're, they're beefier in, in terms of specs and. I'm they really aren't though, in terms of like where they've got the upgrades from, like that they are much beefier in specs, but the way that they've named them. Mm hmm. It's not. It's not. No, it's not. So, uh, well, uh, like just the low so end you're 4080 aware, is effectively a, a, a upgrade 40, to the 3070. Yeah, it's a 4070. Technically, technically, it's the old and the 4070 is just. It's the no. old 1080 3.5 gig slash 1080. Like, what is it? It's not really a 4080. No, so. 4075. Yeah, and it, because it's the the RAM would be fine. Like if nobody cared like the RAM, it's the CUDA cores, it's the 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 graphics cores yeah. in it that are lower as well. So if it was just the RAM, nobody would you know bat an eye at it. It would be like, mm -hmm. "All right, it's just a lower RAM to card, but the same amount of CUDA cores." Now it's like, "Oh, it's also lower the graphics." Like it there's clearly a weird gap in between and, they, and nvidia does this all the team they leave these weird gaps so they can introduce the ti models which is like the, it's the same 4080 but more cuda cores and more ram and it's just the beefier model and it fits in between these gaps that we didn't release right away and they're slightly more expensive <laughs> so well i think it's one of those things like everyone things like the the 90s are always like the high-end really expensive cards they are mm -hmm. going to be your best bet even this generation like the price for what you get is good but most people never need that much and they are stupid expensive yeah. um but on the other hand then you have uh like typically the four the, the 70s tend to be um you're more budget hard, like you're good. You're your you're best bang for the buck type deal. Mm -hmm. But they seem to be wanting to get away from that. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, yeah, we're just gonna call everything the 4080. And that's the one that everyone knows, like the 40, like the 80s are always like the good card. Like they're going to be the top of the line without breaking the bank, although that's not really true either anymore. So. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what they're kind of doing with this. And coupled with the EVGA news, like, I don't know what's going to happen this generation. Like, I know I was looking forward to banking a build. I was going to put in a 4080. And, uh... <laughs> that'd be it. I am that's very that's much going to take up some real I, estate I have, as well. <laughs> well, 4080, no. 4080 was still only two slot. It's still big. It's still fat, though. <laughs> it's still, yes. Um, but it, it's still like semi reasonable as opposed to like the 4090 is a three slot card, and that is ridiculous. Um, I, I love the the uh, the their their business partner cards that like one of them has like an RGB bracket, <laughs> like to support it. <laughs> it's like, help, yeah. help, it'll break my board. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, my yeah, case, pretty much. Uh, my case is well, uh, fitted with the uh, I can buy a piece that makes it so yeah, I can you got have, the, uh, the side slot. Yeah, I got the support built in, I like and it. then I, I can buy a piece that I can actually oh, you mount can my vertically side mount, mount it and side mount it. Yeah, have the extension. Yeah, that's what yeah. I, I think I'd want to do with my next case because <laughs> trying to get that onto a board is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I also am trying to go for like a small form factor, mm -hmm. with good airflow, so it's going to be an interesting mix. Um, but I am looking for a new case as well, so less of an issue when i'm building the entire thing from scratch and i can build it around the graphics card but as much as like it would be really nice to upgrade to this 4080 series with everything coming out of nvidia like it doesn't really seem very um great so definitely looking forward to uh amd's announcements i haven't had an amd card in 15 20 years i the last I time i had it Last time I had an AMD card was... I remember I had a, a Radeon Sapphire card back before they pulled out of the graphics card market. I want to say Wrath of the Lich King. <laughs> Whenever that yeah, that's one... The radar. Not, that's not, not the same time. Wait, wait. wait. And I, I don't want to say like current Wrath of the Lich King. <laughs> just, just, just relaunch. <laughs> I mean original yeah. launch Wrath of the Lich King. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like 2000... I think that was around 2006... So like so, yeah, 2004, yeah. 2006, that seems about the last time I had that card. And then I switched over to NVIDIA and their G4 series. One, because AMD pulled out. And two, because they were just really good cards and relatively mm -hmm. good priced. Um, and that's what I've really been on this whole time. But last gen, I switched over to uh, the Ryzen series CPU because they were really good. And compared to Intel, like it was really good, especially for streaming uh, with all the, the multi-threading and such. But... It'll be interesting because I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with a Ryzen CPU this turn as well. Like they're doing really, really well in the, the CPU market. So switching over to a, an AMD card as well might be reasonable. We'll have to see how they compare on stuff like it, NVIDIA does have all of the like DLSS. Is it DLSS? DLSS 3.0 yeah, yeah, now is coming out. Yeah, so. yeah, it's three. Like I'm still on a 1080 Ti card. So like I haven't had any of these features. I've never had RTX. I've never had all of that stuff. So regardless of what I upgrade, it's going to be better. But we'll see how uh, AMD kind of responds to all of these things. Yeah. I, it, so I <clears throat> like the the big thing is that like for for those of you currently like looking at oh you know I I might build a new computer I like my computer I built three years ago now it's you know, three years ago now uh no it's got to be older than that uh, I know because I built it I bought all everything while I was I, I first moved here so three years. So it's got, it's coming up on three years that this really? computer is that, yeah. Um, I thought your computer was older than that because I thought you built just after I did, and mine is no. That was my five. That was my old one. So ah. so I oh, was it no because I built my my old one. No, you built a newer one than I did, and then I waited, and then Susan now has. And then you computer. upgraded. I just yeah. upgraded that one. Uh, so this one is still pretty new. I, there, I mean, there's things I want to do to it. Like I, I want to swap out the fans in my system and, and put a new, uh, AIO in there. Um, the, I, I love my case. I will not get rid of this case at all, but I want to buy the fans from the maker of this so case. You find a newer case. They are like, Ooh, better. No, I really like this case. Like, uh, but in the, the company, what if they that, updated it, the, I think I still have the current model. Like they haven't updated the model yet. <laughs> Uh, but they did update yeah. their new fans. And so how their fans work is that you don't need a cable for each one. They just inter slide. They slide into each other and then there's one cable. Mm -hmm. So ah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to get do that. It's super like super nerdy, but I want to do that so I can clean up all the cables in my computer and just have like three. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and by their AIO because it runs on the same set of fans. And yeah, and their AIO is very clean. It's very nice. So that's that's my plan. Uh, I, if I upgrade to a graphics card, it'd probably be an, an AMD card. Um, I don't know how it'll work yeah. with my current processor, but if I do upgrade, it'll be in a year or two. You have so a Ryzen too, don't you? I have a Ryzen five, but the third, second, third generation yeah, it's Ryzen. It's a few years older, but it should be. It should oh, be it's a, fine. Really yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, my oh, my always my worry is like, will it? Will it? Will it bottleneck anything? <laughs> so probably not. Um, I mean, it's not going to bottleneck any more than your current one does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> if your current one is bottlenecking, then we got probably your answer. If it's not, yeah, then no, no. Uh, then, but then Susan always gets a free upgrade. So <laughs> Susan will have the best computer ever. <laughs> yeah. And Susan doesn't care. She's like, I don't well, care. Second, <laughs> second best. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's okay. We can take the old one and like make it a stream. <laughs> take that 1080 and just make it a stream piece. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It'd be hot as hell in this room. <laughs> I would just small form yeah, factor see, it at that point. Just, I would just just put it into another room. I would just try to it buy doesn't old have to small. Be in the same room. That's true. That's very true. All Does right, Susan, Susan need a space heater. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just put it in my closet someplace. Just make sure it's cooled off in there. <laughs> Put it what do you in, have a, like the bedroom for when what you, uh what do you have winter air? comes? Yeah. Why not? What do you have an air? What if I could no. <laughs> what if I could put it in the crawl space and just like find a way to keep it dry? <laughs> just dig into the floor. Yeah. Build it into the room. Fine. Just lower it. <laughs> yeah. Raise it up when I need to work on. <clears throat> so uh it, as always, our advice here with anything, gaming parts, computer parts. I think that even the last time we like during the pandemic and computer parts were difficult to get and they're still kind of difficult to get uh and we said the same thing with the playstation 5s and xboxes if you if you absolutely need it get it if you could wait wait if your computer's super old like one of our friends we know is, is he's running on some pretty old tech buy the new uh, here's my suggestion buy a new cpu from ryzen because it's coming out shortly we get the new motherboard get the new ram buy a current gen graphics card you can always upgrade a graphics card later so buy a cheaper graphics card now when you have some more extra cash put a new graphics card in and wait it wait a, wait a generation just to wait just to see like if if you know amd comes out swinging and then it much like how intel had to respond to amd when ryzen actually started winning nvidia might have to change their tune and then you'll have to you'll 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 be it'll be a buyer's market at that point so that's my suggestion uh I have no good. Or I, take I, all of your money and spend it on the new hotness. Yeah, and and be broke. But you know, you can play. You'll have no more money after that. <laughs> Just play Fortnite. That's right. You you do you. That's true. You you definitely need the the best high end CPU and GPU in order to play Fortnite. Fortnite. That's true. That's what the kids and Final Fantasy fourteen mother the MMO that came out in twenty twelve mother I needed forty ninety why to play Fortnite do you play Fortnite now. But not as good. <laughs> it's better. Does it better? Yeah, you can see the dances in HD then. <laughs> the Honestly, only- all jokes aside, that's one thing I'm looking forward to with this new series is being able to actually smoothly play on 4K in like 120. That's or like uh, FPS or higher. Yeah, that's that's. Really I don't have rolling. 4K. I don't yeah. either. I have I have half of that. I have 2K. <laughs> Do you even have that? Yeah, I have a 20. Oh, you have a 1440. I have a 1440, but I have a 20. Oh, your other monitor. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah, no, I do have a 4K second monitor. I don't have a. I don't have a. I do want to upgrade my monitor. I have a really, really wide monitor. That's but... the that's the thing I do want to upgrade. Like I love my Dell, but it's old. Like it's it's old. It's got like the initial GeForce. G-Force I've looked into now. those if you want any help. All right. Thank you. Susan will kill me. Eighteen hundred dollars. Well, actually, one one nice thing is if you are looking for a new monitor, is one of the things that we looked into last time we were looking for monitors way back when was mm-hmm. um, what's it called? G Sync. I have G Sync because I know. So do I, and, and it was really really nice. But if we're looking at Ryzen cards now, G Sync is not useful for us. That's and therefore true. We can save the two, three hundred, four, five hundred dollar. Uh, G-Sync okay. cost. All right, new plan. Everybody go AMD. Go Team Red. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, NVIDIA, if you have too much money and don't care about the company so much, AMD, if yeah, team red. everyone else. Go team red. Speaking of red things, uh, Rusty like. <laughs> You know what? One of my well, better that was transitions. Not, not the worst. Not the worst. <laughs> like, one of my better ones. Uh, so the Rusty Lake game we've been waiting for comes out November second, uh, and it's nice. called yeah, it's called The Pass Within. And boy, it, it is trippy. The graphics are so trippy to me. Still, it is so jarring that it, you play in what is Rusty Lake and what doesn't look like Rusty Lake, and that I think is the weird. really interesting. <laughs> I think the most interesting thing is I am basically doing a media blackout on this. I have not looked at it. I have not seen it. I know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait until we actually have to install it and play it. And that will be my first experience seeing anything. That's great because I have no idea what I'm getting into. (laughs) I I will say this. They didn't show much. That's they did not show much. Like, and and I I expect that it's it's, it's truly it's truly on purpose. And also, I will say this. I think the last rusty game we have to play is free so i definitely want you to yeah. grab that one and play through it like i i will sit back oh, and no. like just you get the click on that one i know there is uh, <laughs> i i because i played that one i want to say within the like the last year oh no i definitely played it oh maybe before i moved sometime between now and la in the last three years i played that one on a stream but i don't re- i don't remember if i got you the played secret on stream too at some point i did that too yeah i and remember that one but it's 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 now remembering like years of stuff playing it all. It's that now fresh in my head of like mm-hmm. what the hell this story is, and it's a, it's a, so it's so wild. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's a lot worse when we're playing it all together and we kind of like piece everything together and we're still like, what? Why? <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my favorite part. It's like what year is? It? Although it was great, Doc it was great. Brown. <laughs> It was great to see the the uh, shout outs on the last one in the the filing cabinet. Got our, got to see our our, our oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know former guest on the show Jesse Cox is in there. <laughs> He's a <laughs> huge Rusty Lake fan. Wild. He's a huge Rusty Lake fan, like huge. So also Rusty Lake like our tweet. So maybe we can get in good with Rusty Lake. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one game company I want to get in with, it's the Rusty. Who you? Fi, uh, Final Fantasy podcast gets in good with Rusty. Like, drink, drink the potion, brother. Drink the elixir, brother. Thank you, Mister Crow. The one. Not the blue one. Not the blue one. We drank the red one last stream, so um, yeah. we have the movie that we'll be watching. I think on what Tuesday, and then Tuesday. We have to go through the blue room, but the blue room, if we, it ends the same way, it means we're going to have to drink the blue elixir and we don't want to drink the blue elixir. No, 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 no. Uh, I wonder if that, that'd be crazy if that led to a secret movie. <laughs> mm. Wait, if we drank the so, blue elixir or if we didn't drink the blue elixir? Drank it and let, leads to like a different movie altogether. <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, die. So, series over. So also, uh, if you want to come watch that with us on Tuesday, uh, we'll post about it in our Discord. So, yeah. Just, just saying, just, just saying. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we, we're pl- we're trying to figure out how to finish Rusty Lake soonish. Like, his October's coming, and there, you know, Spooktober is coming soon. So, I I can't announce one thing. I will announce one thing. Okay, one. I know nothing uh, about October either. So this is new so, to all of us. So there is one thing that uh, I I have already told Susan that she she is stuck with me on Mondays for a bit because we're gonna we're, Susan and I are gonna uh, play yes. through <clears throat> Susan and I are gonna play through a romantic tale, a a lovely uh you know one of those fancy choose your love make your love happen uh, novella games. What are they called? What are the fancy romance games? Life and Dungeon. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong though? No, no. Well, we're talking in dating sims. Yeah, we're playing a dating sim. Uh, we're actually playing a very specific one. Uh, it's called Sucker for Love. It's it's no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's called Sucker for Love. It's a it's a it's an old god eldritch dating sim. Uh, so, you know. KFC <laughs> dating sim again. No. One day, chili. We need to get together again and do that again. It was great. Whoa, Whoa Tibiant. Tibiant. 
I prefer Boyfriend Dungeon. I've never played Boyfriend Dungeon. There's some weird things about the storylines that I'm not too uh, happy with, but I do want to try it at some point, especially if they ever fix the weird storyline thing. But yes, I thank know. you for the five subs. I just yeah. dropped oh, it you. in September. Yeah. Everybody, it's September. <laughs> oh, it is September. It's it the is last a, week. <gasps> is it the last weekend? It's the last. Uh, this last week. No. So this, uh, Wait. Does it go through October? No, no, no. It doesn't go through October. I'm just trying to figure out days. Yeah, no. The the thirtieth is going to be Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So next weekend will not be. Yeah, the first is next Saturday. The first so this will be our last sub temper stream, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there'll be streams. <laughs> oh, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I forget. We do actually stream during the week. I'll, I'll be streaming here tomorrow. <laughs> I'm covering yeah. coffee cast and chat. You'll have to see what I'm yeah. casting. There will be coffee. Yeah, I'm hoping there's going to be coffee as there's well. There'll be definitely coffee yeah. uh, and chat. If you don't chat, I will be disappointed. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I know uh, this is usually a time where we can talk about like the and like the new patch and stuff like that. Like it's we're out the, outside of the memory, like the the quiet times. Everybody's talked about it. I we don't have time today to really dig. Yeah, we we really don't have time today to dig into it. Uh, but uh, you want to like that's good because I've basically I have I'm on the fence right now if I'm going to cancel my sub because I have not been playing. Yeah, I have a house still, so that's that's my my one thing keeping me there. Uh, I mean, did you like it though? Did you like the storyline so far? Oh yeah, I still enjoy the MSQ. I, I've enjoyed all of the stuff that we've been doing with it. I still haven't done the Tataru stuff, although I did half watch your stream with it. So, um, <laughs> weird Tataru dating sim is very weird. <laughs> um, it got really. It get, I didn't. I yeah, thought I was emphasizing I things, but it really did get. It really was spicy in the writing. <laughs> I didn't have to help it. It just uh, did it on its own. <laughs> Yeah, no, there is no embellishing on there. It it did it all itself. Um, the accent. Yeah, I haven't helped. done that yet. I still haven't done the latest Hildebrand stuff. Like that is good though. I would suggest that. I'm sure. Like I'm sure it is good. I just haven't had the interest in going back to 14 for a while. So I'm just kind of leaving it to to build up a bit. Yeah, you're playing because you're playing through Guild Wars too, and you just finished hard. I'm playing through Guild Wars. Yes. Are you, you're currently in uh, Path of Fire. Uh, Path of Fire? No, so similar to how Final Fantasy has the like mid patches, like the 2.1, 2.2, 3.5, like all of those patches, Guild Wars 2 has living st seasons or living story in between expansions. So it first released with the core game, base game, way back when, and 2012, I believe. And then uh, leading up to the first expansion, they did the living story, which they were trying to do. And certainly they were still trying to feel it out. So the first two seasons of the living story were kind of weird. Um, but then they launched the first expansion that was Heart of Thorns. And then after Heart of Thorns, before they launched Path of Fire, they did Living uh, Story Season 3. And Living Story 3 is what I'm currently working through. I'm about halfway through it right now. Um, it's actually really interesting how they do it. It's basically like each of these um, chapters or each of these, these, yeah, each of these chapters in... Um, or sorry, each of these episodes within the living story introduces a full new zone mm -hmm. <laughs> with everything you can do in that zone and the whole story just around that zone. And then when the next one comes out, it's a whole new zone again. So it's like each time that they came out with these, it's a whole nother, a whole new zone, small zones, mini zones, but still a whole zone. Um, so it's pretty interesting how they kind of did that. Um, and after uh, there's, uh, I want to say there are six different episodes, six or eight episodes um, for the living uh, story here. And then uh, I will be starting at a path of fire after that. And after that, then there's living story uh, four. So then there's all of that in between. And then you have end of dragons. Wait, do you? At some point in there, there's something called the ice brood saga, which is more living story. I believe I don't know if it's before or after end of dragons. I have not got the whole timeline down yet. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm still working in like that in between patch content equivalent, um, which I did the first two, did both of those zones. And then I went to the third one. I'm like, you know what? I need a break. <laughs> I am going too much into these and just like doing this and this and this. And that takes a good few hours to get through each of them. So uh, the last I've been playing is just kind of like 
running around and doing old zone content because <clears throat> it's all there's agnostic. not really a level it's not like agnostic in that you can't level up but will level sink down yeah so i can't go into a level 50 area as a level one character and live um although we did do that once was mm -hmm. not very good for our health yeah. uh and that but i can since i am level 80 and i have effectively the best gear that i can get for my character um in terms of like the stats that i want for it i don't have to upgrade that ever again until i get to like the next tier of gear which is involves a deep level of crafting <laughs> and a ton of money and a time ton of time so until i'm willing to go through all of that i have the best gear in the game for this character <laughs> I really thought you were going to say, and I am staying here forever. <laughs> I mean, eventually, like, I, I, I would probably eventually do it all. Um, just right now, I'm more focusing on the story and such and, and seeing what's going on. But um, it is very interesting in that like, the game is very horizontal progression. I have the best gear for my character aside from, like, the top, top, top gear. And this will carry me through pretty much everything but the high, high end group content which i have no plans on doing mm -hmm. <clears throat> and i just bought this <laughs> didn't cost yeah. a whole lot i bought it yeah it, it is a buy to play game just for well it, it's not 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 buy as in like i bought didn't buy it off like a store i didn't pay money for it the gold that i earned i bought it off of the trading post the auction oh you mean you meant that it. that okay i thought you meant the game itself yeah. like <laughs> oh no no no! i've also purchased the game but like the gear i went i just went now and i bought literally the almost best in slot for my entire character that's pretty good because the gear is horizontal like it's horizontal progression once you get the gear it's just skill based like you don't <laughs> Once you it's get not like, the gear, it's not like Final then Fantasy you get every patch. You have to grind a new set of gear. I am done grinding gear for this character. I didn't have to grind for the gear. I can just actually go and play the story. Yeah. Play now, the I can, now I can grind the game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, okay, jumping uh, puzzles everywhere. <laughs> oh, yes. Jumping puzzles are great. And the fact that they come up as dailies quite often is cool because I find and I get to discover new jumping puzzles I never knew existed. I, I, that's one thing I do really enjoy with Guild Wars 2 is their jumping puzzles. And I'm glad, yeah. uh, you need that. to get to Heart of Thorns because they get much more interesting when you can, like, when you get access to a bunch of the movement abilities in Heart of Thorns. And I'm assuming they get even more interesting when you get access to the Path of Fire movement abilities. Probably. The, I'm sure there's jumping puzzles involving the mounts. So, <clears throat> uh, maybe. Right. Well, because they did show off like one of the mount, like the rabbit, I think goes vertically up. Yeah. So the I Springer mount. Yeah, the Springer. <clears throat> Which is good on them. Like they did something interesting with mounts that, uh, yeah, you know, very few games like choose not to do which you know i i i i like it i like that they're like hey mounts could be a system like hey you're right they can be <laughs> the last so time i like, saw no like spoiler. a mount that could jump but it was everquest 2 <laughs> so. yeah well the raptor mount springs forward it has yeah. a, a more of a horizontal jump the springer jumps up but as a vertical jump um and everquest 2 jump mounts the roller beetle has speed yeah gotta go fast everquest 2 mounts uh, the raptor would jump really high, and then you can go really far. Like, yeah, it, like it, but then it, they it got flying mounts, and it just kind of. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the the jumping mounts could beat the flying mounts if you were if you knew that like how to get to places faster. Like I think I did a race one time with Zube, I and I beat him. That. <laughs> <laughs> that could just be Zube. Um, no, like, yeah, I think it's really interesting. Like, without spoilers, I did a daily event yesterday uh, in Heart of Thorns content, and uh, it's an adventure, which is, it could be like a mini dungeon, it could be like a time trial, it's basically like this little tiny, like a mini game, effectively. Mm -hmm. And this one was a race. So I had to go from my starting point through eight different checkpoints and get to the end. It involved lots of jumping. It involved using some custom abilities that you get just for that event. And uh, you start by getting turned into a mushroom. <laughs> Your mushroom has two abilities, one that allows it to tumble forward and avoid things, mm -hmm. and one that allows it to flop onto its head, which then unlocks a second ability, which allows it to spring forward really, really far. 
All right. And you needed to use both of those in order to get through this time course. I did it, which I, I took me a little while, but I, I completed the course in what I thought was really good time. I got bronze, the lowest ranking. The highest ranking would have required me to complete it in like a minute faster than I did. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, things like that. And the other thing, like I was going and I was doing. Actually, it was that same one, I think. No, was it? No, one of the, the dailies that I had to do the other day as well um, was just go and do four events in this zone. Again, Heart of Thorns, no spoilers. So just go and do four events. And events are similar to like a fate type deal. They're always running and they're always actually they're really, really fun, too. Um, but I did the events, and what happened was that the zone ended up doing a meta event. And meta events in Guild Wars 2 are zone-wide events. Think your chain events in, in Final Fantasy XIV, where you do this fate, and then this fate, and then this fate, and this fate, and this big boss eventually will show up. Uh, or you get, like, your 30-minute bosses, your 30-minute fates, where you have to go and defeat something like the Tarrasque or something in, in the zone, where it's, like, a, a higher reward. Meta events in Guild Wars 2 are a little bit more in-depth. So in this one in particular, we had multiple lanes and there's three lanes and each of those needed like a full fledged group of like 10 plus people to complete their events. When each of those lanes completed all of them, then the zone wide meta event would start and each of those lanes we had access to a specific area where they had to complete their own individualized events to take down a champion, a, a very, very strong creature. And do a whole bunch of other things while it's happening. Well, each of these groups has to complete that event. When a group completes, they kind of go to another group and help out until all of the three events were completed. When all of those three events were completed, then we finally go down to the final event where you have to defeat a minion of the dragon for that expansion that is incredibly powerful. And you do this. You will love this event by the way, whenever you get to it, because uh, it kind of is like the Hrace Fulgar fight where there are a bunch of islands mm -hmm. and gliding is a thing that's unlocked in Heart of Thorns. So you actually literally have to glide to these islands and glide like hop between these different islands in order to attack wherever the champion is coming from. And then periodically it will do stuff where you actually have to jump into the, the drafts, the updrafts. Um, and when you jump into the updrafts, you can grab bombs and you have to actually like glide up in the air and drop the bombs from above while other people are attacking it to stun it and like continuously repeat this all over the place. And it's also destroying the islands at the same time. And when you defeat it, you actually get an in-game cutscene of nice. like how it dies effectively. It was really, really cool. I've never seen it before. It was great. Uh, another one was like, it was a four part meta or like four lane meta where like you have to complete all the different areas and then you get like giant robot suit effectively and you have to take over a city. Great. Kind and then when you win, you get access to like a ton of loot. Like, I mean, it took us like five to eight minutes to complete the final part of that event. And then it took me 15 minutes in order to get through all of the chests. <laughs> there was a lot of loot. It's great. <laughs> I killed um, something and look at all the treasure. <laughs> no kidding. Like I actually, I, I just logged in one day and it, it had just completed. So I didn't do any of the event, but I still was able to get half the chests. Oh, hey, not all of them. I, I just showed it, up, but I got some. <laughs> there's so much treasure. Exactly. I got hand me down treasure. <laughs> it was so it was great. Participation. Um, yeah, Heart of Thorns <laughs> really hard, but also really fun events. Uh, uh, it's like hard to find yeah. groups to do the things in Guild Wars 2. Are there a lot of people playing? Uh, no and yes. So is it hard to find groups? Absolutely not. There uh, depends on the time you're playing. Like I've gone through and I've seen events and I've walked through them when it's not like popular hours and it's hard to kind of get those events done. So some events might be a little bit harder to do. People are generally pretty friendly if you shout out like, hey, I need to get this done. Can you, is anyone up to help me? You'll usually get a few people that come in and, and join. Um, are there a lot of people playing? Yes. Uh, Guild Wars 2 has the mega server idea as well, similar to other games. Um, everyone is basically on the same server in North America. So regardless of what actual server you're on, 
everyone plays together. So it doesn't feel like it's empty. Yeah, it's not really empty. And sometimes you will get zones, especially the older zones that people don't go to anymore. And it'll pop up and be like, hey, there's not a lot of people here. Uh, would you like to volunteer to switch over to uh, another instance of this and we'll close down this one? So that's kind of a, a neat feature where they will kind of consolidate maps to yeah, make sure give you a that buff. people yeah. are around. <laughs> They're like, we'll give you a they buff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good speed buff. boost, XP boost. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good for leveling. Um, but it, it is really interesting. And especially like all of these different bosses, all of these big like meta events, they do have pretty good rewards. And people are still running them. Heart of Thorns is probably close to eight years old now. Mm -hmm. Guild Wars 2 just had a, its 10 year anniversary. So it's probably like six to eight years old. It's relatively old. And I had no problem doing most of the events on them. Yeah. Uh, people want to do them. They are fun events. The dailies that come out means that um, the dailies actually have like um, they're they're linked into like uh, if you want to do PVE, PVP, world versus world, so you can choose what type of content you want to play. But also, there's generally a good variety of content. So there's always going to be something that's going to be in the core game, the base game. There's always going to be something that all right. So core game in Heart of Thorns. Th Heart of Thorns are usually kind of in a, at least most of them. Every now and then they will have something from Path of Fire, and I haven't been to End of Dragons yet, so I don't know if those eventually get in, but um, the dailies are typically locked into content that you've done before. So I have gone into Path of Fire, it gives me some Path of Fire dailies. But in general, like I have not had to step foot into Path of Fire to complete all of the dailies each day. Because uh, you only need to complete three, they give you four options. I ignore anything that's Path of Fire, and then I can go and do the ones that I want. Usually there's some gathering, um, some exploration, a jump puzzle, or event completing. Pretty straightforward. Nothing, nothing too complicated, and people are super willing to help out with everything. Um, you'll have people that are running events, and they'll give notifications every time some, a new event comes up that someone comes across the way. This is come to this point, and there's an event here, and there'll be indicators on the map that tell, kind of just tell you where to where to go and whatnot. For jumping puzzles, there's usually indicators on the map because people are just hanging out there, and if you want, uh, there are people that will just teleport you to the end if you want to cheat and not do it. But otherwise, they'll help you show you where like that event starts and help you through it if you want. Like. Uh, it's a it's a very very friendly community. It's a very nice community uh, to that be in. So there, there's definitely no lack of people that will come out and do things uh, with you. Mm -hmm. So good, good to know. Yeah. Uh, also, I I forgot I didn't give my update about like what I thought of the MSQ. Oh, uh, it's good. Uh, oh right. Uh, if you play Final Fantasy four and get some more. Get some more tidbits about it. Uh, I, it that's my thought. Like, it, it, it's hard to say. Like, I, I don't know where we're going. But I, on my personal, like, level of and sentiment of the internet, uh, I think a lot of people <laughs> are uh, bummed out that the story ended. I feel like they're, they're ha like, they, they like the ending. I'm not saying they're mad about the story. But I feel like a lot of people are, they, they have no connection oh, now like the, to anything. Yeah, the, the asking story. Right. Yeah, they have no connection to anything right now, and so they're kind of like, "This is good," but so it's now it's like, "What do we? Where do we go? What are we doing? What's going?" <laughs> like, right. So, and I, I, I think, think that's and, fair when you're you're coming off a ten year of continuous story. Yeah, it's like reading a ten year epic, and then like it finishes, and then then you're like, "All right, what's next?" And you're like, and you start a new story. You're just like, "This is, this is good." <laughs> So yeah, you don't have that background, that context, that yeah. involvement. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of things that probably weren't as good, but they are now. Uh, New World. <laughs> uh, New World's getting an update. Uh, I, I got it. All right. I, I am a. I played the beta. I streamed the beta live here on on our on our channel. Uh, and what I played of it was good. I did have concerns of it, and I did, did chat about those as I was playing. Like, hey, I felt that the traveling system was too much. Like, the like your questing was <laughs> way too crazy. Like, the questing flows felt so awkward because it was like, oh, hey, you're picking up a quest in one town, and then you had to go three towns over to go do the next quest, which it didn't seem right. Like, that didn't, like, take yeah. me to the next town. Like, why? 
Yeah. Um, which I understand that's very like theme parky and stuff like that, but it, it, there's a reason for it. Like, like there's a little bit right. of guidance in a new world, uh, and then explore maybe later. <laughs> Uh, so they're fixing that they're doing a Yoshi P and not ne- necessarily destroying the world, but redoing the one through 25 leveling. And if it goes well, which a lot of people on the PTR seem to be enjoying it, they're going to do it for the whole game. Mm-hmm. So the one through 25 is all being replaced with the storyline now that is uh, tangible that actually connects to what new world story is, uh, <laughs> which they didn't, which is so the strange. Fact that to- that is a change is. Yeah weird yeah it it is weird right but it is uh it's off the worrying so it's gonna be it's gonna be king arthur based so mm-hmm. so like and it it's so far people are like it's really good like the story's really good and they did That's good and they they're doing things uh they're taking that same concept of level design for the whole new brimstone stands which is this whole massive zone that they're adding in the desert and they're do i gotta give them credit like uh, they fixed a lot of the problems that they had at launch, which is good. They have not added any pay to win things to the cash shop. And mm-hmm. they did a lot of the things that I think I like about other games like Guild Wars 2. There's jumping puzzles to get the chests and they have really cool concepts for weapons. So like you, you level your character, but you're also leveling weapons up as well. And their trees. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So it's. It's like, okay, I'm going to level a blunderbuss, right? That's a thing. And a, a blunderbuss is a mid-range. Yeah, but it's cool that you can play with a, a blunderbuss. It's yeah, a it's, a it's a gun. It's a gun. So, uh, uh, so it, but, there's gun. All, but there's a hatchet as well that you can level the throwing, like the range line of it and throw it. So it's a, a range weapon. Or you can do the the, the yep. melee version of it too. So there's different, tr- there's two trees on each on each weapon. And they're relatively okay. short to level. So it's like there's only 20 levels. So you could level all the weapons up. And, and you keep them in your bag. And so if you can play around. So there's healing staves. There's a void gauntlet. Are your, are your inventory slots limited? Uh, I mean, you can kind of like, uh, I don't want to say it's like Guild Wars. It's probably closer to WoW where it's like you can get ba- bigger bags. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's, you do the it, same thing. It's, it's, it's same for Guild Wars too. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to buy anything. Like you don't have to buy any slots. You just put the bag. In yeah. Your yeah. So same with Guild Wars. You don't have to buy anything. You get five slots for free. That's true. That last slot though. And most people <laughs> say that there's no reason for you to buy more bag slots. Yeah. No, you want that last slot. You got to pay. <laughs> shared, shared inventory slots. On the other hand, you do want to buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to share things. Them. Yeah. Uh, so it looks good. And uh, I, the game was on sale. So I was like, I'm like, I'm just going to buy it when it's on sale. I'll wait for this because they're going to do fresh start servers when this new patch drops and that new content drops. So everybody has an even playing field. They're not going to let people transfer with their high end characters and their their money and their all that. They said we're going to do fresh. They they are going to have normal. They've added new servers like the population's growing with all this yep. hype. And even I checked it right before we went live. Uh, new Worlds had more people watching and streaming uh, than Final Fantasy 14 and Elder Scrolls Online. Which is shocking. They Elder Scrolls and Final Fantasy both have 5K. New World had 15. Which yes, yeah, it's not shocking when they're coming out with new content, right? New content. Both yeah, Elder that, Scrolls that. and Final Fantasy are both content lull periods. So yeah. it makes sense that that thing with the new content is going to have it. Honestly, though, I would think Trombone, here, champ. whatever that game is, Trombone Trump, Trump, yeah, yeah. Champ. That yeah. one's got to have even more viewers right now. I maybe. <laughs> Can we get a trombone champ check, please? <laughs> Here's a new emote. Yeah. <laughs> trombone champ check. Uh, what do they even look like? What is that even? <laughs> trombone champ. Uh, I want to be a tromboner. Uh, there are 17.8K viewers. I, that game's crazy. It looks so good. It looks absolutely stupid and ridiculous, and I hate it, and I want to play it. Yeah, same. Because I if, am. If it had multiplayer, a sucker for and rhythm it, games, like yeah. Oh my god! Oh, if, if it had if multiplayer, it, we'd be done. Oh my god, we'd be the. <laughs> we'd be too the worst. Tr- <laughs> yeah, too fast, too trombone, too <laughs> too trum, too bone. <laughs> nope, no, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that one. <laughs> No, I guess we know someone no, who does. Yeah, <laughs> you get a cool set of armor for watching. Someone who plays a trombone is a tromboner, though. 
Yeah, they are. That's that's the name. Uh, I had I when I was in <laughs> middle school band. Have you, have you ever read the description for this game? I can. <laughs> I can do it right Honk, now. Blow and toot your way through over twenty songs. Collect all fifty unique tromboner cards and uncover the mysteries of the trombo tromboverse. Tromboverse. Do you have what it takes to become the true trombone champ? Yep, tromboverse. I love tromboner cards. Use your use the toots you earn from playing songs to purchase sacks of tromboner cards. These cards can be used to unlock new tromboners, new trombone colors, and other mysteries. If this game had ska in it and you could play ska songs, <laughs> oh, you know it, it's going to. Oh, if it my doesn't God. already, it's going to. Oh, if they had ska songs, it'd be so great. <laughs> I'd play nothing. I feel like I, I, like I just have ska night. <laughs> Right now, I feel like all of the songs that I've heard about are all. Um, they should all be free, right? They, they should all be open uh, source, but like they're yeah, public what's domain. The word. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you can. So, so it's all like there's not. Yeah, all these songs are. Anyone can play them, but it's got like, electronica popularity. <laughs> it does have a ska song, by the way. It does have a ska um, song. Oh, my God, it does. Um, it also has trap mix. <laughs> Trombone trap. trap mix of a, it's a trap mix of a Mozart song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! If they did just a ska of all the the the, the public domain things, oh my god, that'd be the so, best. So here's the. DLC. There's only twenty so Wait, twenty five songs, including five original compositions. So there's also Sprach uh the Stra. Zarathustra? Yeah. Very familiar. Uh, Auld Lang Syne, but the chant mix of Auld Lang Syne. Uh, a song called Baboons with an exclamation mark. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, because of course you have to have Beethoven in there. Uh, the Blue Danube, Strauss. Uh, the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, Tchaikovsky. Yes. <laughs> Ein Klein, uh, which is their own mix of the Mozart. And then Einklein Nacht Music, which is a trap mix of uh, Mozart, uh, The Entertainer, of course, Joplin, uh, Entry of the Gladiators, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this person's name, mm -hmm. uh, God Save the King, because it's no longer God Save the Queen, mm -hmm. um, Hava Nagila. Limbo. Uh huh. Oh, Canada. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Old Grey Mare. Ain't what she used to be. <laughs> Rosa Monday, I think. Uh, also known as the Beer Barrel Polka. Pop, 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 pop. To my Lou. No, that's that's chicken one. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not the chicken dance. Mm. Um. I feel like that's a mistake. Stars and Stripes Forever. Yeah. The Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Take me out to the ball game. Yeah. <laughs> the William Tell Overture. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then Warm Up, Trombone, Sky, Trombone, Fuerte, which are all sound to be original. And another original one by them, Scabbard. Mm -hmm. Scabbard. Oh, my God. Did you also did you say Scabbard? Like, Ska and then Bird is all capitalized. Did you say Trombone Fuerte? <laughs> Fuerte, yeah, F U E R T A. Like in Spanish Heritage Month? Yes. Spanish Heritage Month, everybody. That's all. Spanish. I don't know what the song sounds like, but. <laughs> it sounds like this, but trombone group. <laughs> yeah, just, it's just that with that extra trombone. I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's all public domain music, uh, but I said the scoff version of Freebird. The you know, I hope so. I feel like it won't be because you know, copyright. But I feel like, it, considering it, its popularity and it's it's getting bigger, I could see them um, introducing, like, partnering with different groups to bring more music in. Yeah, if you can find like like Scott artists that are just like, hey, you can play, use my music. It's free to use and it's stream safe. Go ahead. I would love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything with a trombone in it. Which isn't a so, lot. If Trombone Champ brings in the fifth wave of ska, <laughs> that's all I can hope for. Ska music Come should never be cold, dead. Please. Yeah. Ska will never die. Ska will never die. It's true. Oh, we need some punk in there too. Put some Paramore in there. 
Isn't Paramore back? <laughs> you know, like they are. Yeah. I like Paramore's back. Uh, by the way, uh, if you if you want a newer ska band to listen to, that's fronted by a uh, a trans uh, woman. Uh, please go give We Are Union a listen. They are so good, so good. Uh, you Can may music later. you yeah you may you may I will. Uh, you may know their uh, tromboner uh, who who's uh, who has the YouTube channel Ska Two Network. So <laughs> does all the nice, covers. Nice. Yeah. So uh, and that is. Peter's music <laughs> choice of the week. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I think you have to go soon, right? Because you're you you have someone heading your way. Yes, I I yeah. All right. Whenever so, we have we, we wrap up, we wrap up. Yeah. So, uh, well, we can end it on trombonin. <laughs> trombonin. <laughs> What's Hambone Champ gonna come out? <laughs> Imagine that game. That game would oh, be no. great. <laughs> the spoons. Oh man, just like somebody just slapping meats. <laughs> nope. No, no, that's where we end it. That's All where right. we end it. Well, we had a good run. If you're listening to this live tomorrow, Coffee Cast and Chat will be hosted by myself <laughs> because no one's going to watch me. Well, maybe I hand bone tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> got coffee and he's not afraid to drink it yeah that's right uh also if you're still listening to our podcast can you please take a moment and follow us on twitch.tv forward slash maelstrom radio we rarely do any spot checks so also if you're listening to us and uh you don't do the whole twitch thing uh whatever your platform you're on give us a rating just especially like itunes if you use itunes give us a rating on itunes we haven't done that in years <laughs> go there give us what you want like, a, you know, you can do one star and be like, I don't like this. Or you give us a five star. I'm like, I love this. This is my jam. <laughs> More people Maybe will find un- us that way. Unfollowing and refollowing does not uh, change the number. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Was he not following before? You're welcome. <laughs> it does. It, it can mess with your uh, sub streaks, though. So careful. Yeah, careful. Tipping how this works, though, is you go to your friends and other Discord channels that have not listened to us. And you'd be like, hey, go, go follow Maelstrom Radio. Or your mother and your grandma if they're gamers. That's true. Or your enemies, I guess. Yeah. Shout out to Paul's mom. Yeah, Paul's mom. Uh, so October, fan. our October recordings uh, for our show are going to be uh, Friday, October 14th. Uh, unfortunately, Friday, October 13th was not happening this year, so we couldn't make that happen. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. And Saturday, yeah, October 20th. You said 20th. Friday, October thir- 14th? O- October 14th. That's the Friday, or that's the the sat or the Friday though, right? That's the Friday. Yeah, yeah. Friday, October thirteenth, fourteenth, fourteenth. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, that's perfect. Why? Because that means the... I mean that means game nights on the thirteenth. Uh, Not Friday the thirteenth, but we can still uh, get the thirteenth. Oh, we can get the thirteenth. Uh, and it'll be the Friday th- on Chili's time. So it yeah, works. yes. His Friday, our thirteenth. Mm. What about frenemies? <laughs> uh, yeah, frenemies work. Enemies. B- baconies, I guess. B- baconies. <laughs> or baconies, like bacon ponies. Anyway, uh, so uh, <clears throat> if you want to see Spoopy, you show up. Uh, there, there might be s- spooky scary. Uh, there might be scary spooky. Uh, there might be uh, everything in between those two things. Um, definitely sucker, sucker for love. And... Uh, I wish we could find a great spooky multiplayer game that wasn't like Phasmophobia. <laughs> yeah, so. That's right, too. Oh. Well. And then find out more. Mm-hmm. Well. With that, uh, as always, <laughs> till C swallows all. Yeah, yeah I gotta play the music first. <laughs> Yeah, till C is walls all. Keep listening. Tromboners. <laughs> Maelstrom Radio is brought to you by MaelstromRadio.com and Blackfire Media. Produced by Flattis, Shintier, and Susan Sprinkle. Join us live Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash maelstromradio. Send email to show at maelstromradio.com, tweet us at maelstrom underscore radio, or join our Discord at maelstromradio.com slash discord. 
Views and opinions expressed by our hosts and guests do not reflect the views and opinions of any companies discussed on today's show.